All right. Um, so I'm sure there's going to be a few more people who are going to be joining as we get going. Um, can I get a quick hand up that you can hear me? Anybody? Can everybody hear me? Yes, perfect. Thank you all so much for doing that. Um, so, you know, this is the second time I've taught this class, and I was really hoping to be able to teach this in person just because of the windows and, you know, just the interaction with agents on, you know, what they've been using, what they have questions on, what they've been using with Mia. Um, but, you know, this is where we are now. The reason why this class came to be is because Mia's had a very high success rate um, from all demographics, all different areas, all different calibers of agents, new, advanced. Mia has been doing very, very well. And the reason why I thought this class was super important is because I realized that the more I interacted with agents, I realized that the limitations that the agents have been setting on themselves with Mia, where they've only used one specific part of Mia, or, or the broker even told me, well, my agent has only been using the social media post on Facebook. And I'm like, well, you know, Mia has so many different collateral pieces and they can go out in so many different directions. And I feel like you need to be able to hit every single person to get the word out on your listing. So that's where this class came to be. Um, you'll notice that I have a slideshow. The last time I taught this class, I ran the slideshow, but I kept having to hop back and forth between the slideshow and the actual program and the items. So you'll notice that I'll kind of be doing that. So yeah. Let's get started. I'm so glad y'all could join me. It's been a little bit since I've last taught a class since July was supposed to be kind of more of a planning month, but um, I hope y'all enjoy. I hope y'all get something new out of this, or if anything, just try something new using Mia. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the um, slideshow. All right, so this class is all about how to be strategic with Mia. Mia is your innovation and automation program but also to be innovative you have to need you have to adapt you need to adapt Mia is a strong marketing media tool and the reason why this class is so important it's all about are you taking advantage of all the different tools that Mia gives you do you have a game plan for whenever you get a new listing or a status changes on your listing how comfortable are you with the Mia tools these are three very important questions when it comes to using Mia. Let me pop out this question board. All right. I'm going to try to address questions as I go because I know I'm going to be hopping back and forth. So let's keep moving. The focus of this class is quick and easy creation of collateral. Of course, that's what Mia does. The second one is the most important, is coverage. When you get a collateral piece in Mia, are you hitting all of the different areas that your collateral piece allows for or that you know how to use? Timely correspondence, email, CRM, strong branded communication. That's what's so great about Mia. We have offices that are primarily only using Mia because they do not have marketing coordinators. And this is a great resource that covers their need. FMLS resource. Did you know that this program has a FMLS resource that you can immediately put back into your listing? I'll go over that. Distribution to several social media platforms. Well, so what I hear with Mia is people use the items um, in Mia and then the social media that dis the distribution of the social media. But the real other great thing is that you can take that same social media piece and use it in other social um, networks that aren't featured on Mia. And I'll try to cover a little bit of that as well. Social media coverage, once again, very important. It's a social media world. Which tools do you use? Potential clients, buyers, et cetera, are all different. Don't miss opportunities. So the reason why this slide is so important is for people like myself. I primarily use Twitter. Twitter is my number one social media platform. My second is YouTube, and third is Instagram. And with this program, you have the ability for social media coverage. So you can hit me with a social media post knowing that my primary social media is Twitter. So the goal is to 
get the word out to all the different platforms because each person that you're trying to reach uses different social media. Okay. I'm hoping for some questions here as we go. Okay, so here's a really neat thing that I brought up recently for the, the new millennials, the new generation. New social media sites like TikTok and Vera, Vera are springing up and attracting millions of users like never before. While on one hand, this explosion of social media platforms presents brands with unprecedented opportunities to reach growing audiences on emerging platforms, there's also an increasing challenge around how to best allocate time, resources, and attention among a sea of options now at the disposal of marketers around the world. So what it's saying is there are so many different social media platforms. Make sure this works for you. You don't have to go so far out into the middle of nowhere. Use one social media platform to cover other social media platforms so you don't wear yourself out. Whether it's using you know, um, Instagram to post to Facebook, um, Tumblr and Twitter, whether it's using Facebook to post out to other socials from Facebook, think of the different ways that you're going to use these different tools to get the word out so you don't wear yourself out. Also come up with a routine. If you're going to get a new listing, what are the different social medias that you're going to focus on the moment you get that new listing so that you don't just wear yourself out so bad right off the bat? According to Adobe, I have I need to change that to four. The top four social medias for Adobe at this moment is Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. So if anything, I would choose two or three that you know that you can maintain and that you feel comfortable with and work with them. The great thing about me is it actually gives you a few tools so you don't have to physically go in every time. I mean, Mia literally provides you with a video that posts directly to YouTube, and I'll go over how to do that. All right, so this is where I go into the actual program and explain some things and make sure everybody's on the same page. If you run into any issues, you know you can contact me at any time. I can help you walk through this, but I'm going to hop back over to um, Mia, and I'm going to go over some little things. Do I have any questions about what I've covered so far? It's kind of a quiet group so far. <laughs> thank you, thank you for that one. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna minimize for a second and I am going to go, so not yet. <laughs> there might in our office, it's weird when I can't see your faces, so I appreciate y'all writing in the comment section. Thank y'all so much. So what I've done so far is I went to my internal office and I went ahead and hopped into Mia through the, um, the hamburger option to get to Mia. Okay, so I'm going to cover just some little things to make sure that everybody's where they need to be. Okay, the very first thing is you need to make sure that you've synced up your apps to Mia. This is nor normally just a one-time thing that you need to do. So if you come up to the top right under the profile and go to app authorization, you'll notice that there are four items right here. You have your Facebook, which of course is for your Facebook posting. You have Office 365, which is for your contacts to be imported to Mia. Same with Google contacts. Now you don't have to do these two items because a lot of people are using the CRM in its place. There's also a limitation to Mia with contacts. There is a 1500 contact um, distribution per month. So there is a cap. So if you're going to use it, just be selective how you're going to use it. Um, you'll need to, if you're going to use the syncing of Office 360, you're going to need to click on the authorization button and author, authorize it to your 365. Same with Google. The other one, of course, I get the most questions about is YouTube. Now, YouTube is such an easy win. This is your low hanging fruit item because Mia creates a video for every listing that comes into Mia that you've put into FMLS. You can't beat that. It literally is a video that gets put on to Mia and you can put it onto your YouTube account. So when you 
click on the authorization button, it's going to look for your Google account that's tied to YouTube, okay? Let me go here. So say you go to youtube.com and you log into YouTube using your Gmail, Yahoo, whatever email that you're going to use to log into YouTube, you'll notice at the very top right that it either says your channel or it's gonna ask you to create a channel. You need to create the channel. So log into YouTube with whatever account that you're planning to use email-wise and create a channel. The steps are very simple. They're gonna ask you to name the channel and whether it's public. And it's like, I think it maybe is three or four steps and you have a channel, okay? Don't be afraid of it. It's gonna be just a blank channel that you can load your videos into on YouTube. So I recommend you doing this. I hope everybody in this class before the, before the day's over has created a YouTube channel with possibly your name, so Drew Burr Realtor, and has it available so that Mia can push property um, videos to YouTube. It's an easy, low-hanging fruit item that you should absolutely take advantage of. Do I have any questions about YouTube? Usually I get tons of questions after this class about this. And I, and I understand it is a little overwhelming because not everybody feels comfortable with YouTube, but Mia takes care of the video for you. And there's no excuses. It, it literally, when you click the button to publish your video to YouTube, it takes about 30 minutes and it goes straight into this account because they're synced together. So the question I just got is, um, so you have a YouTube channel, will it put on a playlist? No, I don't think it automatically puts on a playlist. So you will need to go back and edit and assign it to a playlist which I would recommend doing. I think that's brilliant. Having a playlist for your current listings is awesome, awesome. It also allows you to segment your um, channel and make it seem more robust. I'll show an example. From my H&R Trainer account, which most of you already know about, I'm gonna go to my channel. I'll show it to you real quick. Uh, so this is my channel for H&R Trainer. This right here, this tab, see how it says videos, playlist, channels, the discussion. Playlist is basically what puts it into like a queue. So if you go to the playlist and click play, it will start playing the videos in the playlist. In your edit tool, when you edit a video, here, I'm gonna bring up, uh, that's not my video. I'm gonna go into basics real quick. I'm gonna open up my video. And say you go into the blue button that says edit video. This will Hopefully not take too long. You'll notice on the far right side where it says playlist, you can change which playlist or create a brand new play playlist for it. YouTube is not scary. I will be teaching a class in August, uh, basically a YouTube's basics class because I have feel very comfortable using um, YouTube and I'll go over all these different items, um, best practices for description. So keep an eye out for it. It will be a Zoom meeting will be a Zoom meeting. So yeah, I would recommend doing a playlist for your YouTube um, videos. Most of the, the videos will look like this. Oh, see what I have here. I have an old YouTube account that I do not want, that I do not want to delete. However, I want to delete old material and cannot seem to have the option to delete. Uh, so you've been able to log in to this account. Okay, so you've been able to log into this account and you need to delete it. So you need to go to the editor, uh, the, um, what's it called? The, um, the studio, this is the studio. And go to videos. I think it's more actions, yes. That's how you would delete it forever. So you need to go to the editor, the studio, find the video, Click the checkbox next to the video you want to remove and delete forever. And it will confirm that you need that you're okay with deleting it forever. You're welcome. Seriously, great question. I had a feeling that YouTube would kind of be the one that most people want to know the most about. So thanks for asking these. The video for um, Mia looks like this. It's going to be branded. I'm going to go in how to post it in just a second. Um, 
Most of y'all may have watched it already. It's great. It's branded to you. It has your information. It takes the information from FMLS and feeds it throughout the video. It's got nice music. It's a great touch piece that you should easily be able to click on the share button in YouTube and share onto your socials. Once again, one item like YouTube is allowing you to share across multiple social media platforms. Take full advantage of this. If you only want to do Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr, I totally understand. If you don't use Tumblr and you want to see what else is on here, there's also Pinterest, LinkedIn, there's many options. Use one platform to cover multiple platforms. That's what this class is about, not wearing yourself out on the minutia. Okay, so this is the video. Super important little tidbit to note. In your description, make sure you grab some information from the listing. Also, see how I have click here to learn more about the listing? I'm gonna show you where this is, but this link right here is the actual website from Mia. You try to bring things full circle when you do your posting to make the post more robust. Same with when you're on Facebook. Make sure your posts are robust, that they have content and they have links and hashtags. When in doubt, have hashtags and at symbols. Hashtags are for searched words. At symbols are for other people who have accounts or you know, anything that has an account within that social media is an at symbol. Elaborate on what part? Are you talking about the description part? Because I can, I, that's, I think I understand what you're saying. So the description here for this video, I'll just post several, oh, okay. So the big thing is in Mia, and I kinda, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself a little bit, I understand that, but most of y'all have been inside of Mia, Mia, you've been to your projects, you've gone to your listing, and you have a video, right? You have your video. When you click on the upload to YouTube, you have to put in a description, okay? Within 30 minutes of you posting your video, the description here and the click to learn more is what I've added as the link. So my video was up within 30 minutes, okay? I don't want to waste time with this social media item. I want to get this video out to my other socials, okay? The way to do that is there's an option right here to click share, and I can post them to other socials through YouTube. Okay, so basically I'm taking one collateral piece, this video from Mia, and I'm going to push it to YouTube first, which is one, Facebook, Twitter, and say I'm also going to put it on LinkedIn. Okay, just by clicking on this, this will create a new shareable item to those different social media platforms. That's what I mean by that. This can be done in most other platforms as well, like Instagram, for instance, which I'll reference in just a second, where you can go to your app and post to Facebook, Twitter, and um, I believe Tumblr is one of the other options, which is another social media. So you're not individually doing each item. All right, so I'm gonna, got it, cool. Oh, there, I'm, I'm gonna come back around in full circle in just a second, of course. So the question I just got, shouldn't you upload natively to Facebook, Instagram, instead of sharing from, um, from, from um, another platform? Is that what you're trying to say? It's it's true. You you want to natively post on Facebook and and yeah, of course. Yes, if you have that time, if that's one of your primary socials, yes, of course. But in a lot of times, you're just wanting to get the coverage out there. So if you're just trying to cover multiple resources, for instance, if I you're right, Facebook I actually use, I would probably share to Tumblr, um, Twitter, and maybe LinkedIn. This just this sharing option just gives you um, basically a shortcut. Yeah, you, so you get what I'm saying. There's some that you're going to use more because you're more proficient with, but the ones that you're not proficient with, use the sharing option. Make your life easier on yourself. 
I like that you brought that up. That's a great, that's a great question. Native posting is very important, which is what Mia allows you to do as well. All right, so we've gone over kind of doubling back app authorization. Go ahead and app authorize your Facebook, go ahead and authorize your YouTube. And if you want your contacts to be added, you can do the 365 or Google contacts, or you can actually add your contacts individually by creating a new contact or importing contacts from a list. One thing I will recommend if you are going to use this, knowing that there's a cap per month, CRM, you, your CRM list will work in this platform. I've done it a million times. If you want to load, say you have 50 contacts in your CRM on Harry Norman and you want to load them in here, export your list and put them into your MIA account. It just gives you another option. But I'm also going to cover how to take an item from MIA and put it into the CRM, just so you know. All right. So I'm going to double back to my slides real quick. All right. So now I'm gonna actually get into the Mia tools. I will double back into Mia again. I wish I could have two windows. <laughs> so I'm gonna click. The very first item that I cover is your virtual tour. And this is by far the lowest of the hanging fruit, okay? You can't beat that Mia creates a virtual tour for you. You can share it on your socials. Two right off the bat that they feature is Facebook and Twitter. But the one thing I would do when I get a brand new listing is I would take this virtual tour and I'd go ahead and put it right back into FMLS as a virtual tour option. Because in Mia, it gives you a branded and unbranded version. So I would go into Mia, I would grab the unbranded version, which I'll show real quick. I know I have to hop back. Projects, I'm gonna go to another listing and I'm gonna bring up my virtual tour. Okay, you'll notice here, here are the two options from the slides, right? Facebook and Twitter. Facebook, Twitter, you have a publish unbranded and a publish to web branded. What I would do is I would publish unbranded and I would take that link and put it into FMLS. Even if you have to send that link to your office staff member to put it onto Swift, I would take that link that it creates and I would send it to my office staff member and say, hi, I have a virtual tour I'd like to incorporate into my listing 5332 Green Hill Place. It's an easy win, and it's one extra item that's featured on this listing. Now, of course, there's a branded version. If you want to share that on Facebook and Twitter or just sending the link to your clients, totally understand that works great, but FMLS wants unbranded. Do I have any questions on the virtual tour option? If you haven't used it, give it a shot. All right. Next item, which is my by far my absolute favorite item in me, and you'll hear it in my voice every time I say it, is the video, which we've mostly covered already because I know it's a desired piece in me. Once again, it gives you one option to post to YouTube. Now I have put in a request that I'd like the option for us to be able to download the video from Mia, and it might be in the works, but that's between marketing and um, the Mia creators. So the main thing is this video can be pushed to YouTube. You can edit it as well. You can make a copy of it too. And that's where I come into something that I think is really important. And I'm actually gonna do a short video later on about this. It's called segmentation. The virtual tour, the video, um, a flipping through of images, there's a thing called segmentation. So if you have a listing that is, maybe just needs a little bit more love, right? And say it's on Lake Lanier, it's a lakefront property. What I would do is I would make a copy of my virtual tour and I would make it only have photos of the exterior, the lake shots, the dock, the property, making it a segmented virtual tour of only the major features of the listing and what makes it so great. The reason why you do this is it's basically making its own call to action. You're going to post a virtual tour to Facebook saying, hey, 
Would you love to live on Lake Lanier? Well, check out my great listing at blah, 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 right on the water. So you're segmenting the reason why someone would be interested in a particular listing. The great thing about Mia is it allows you to do that. You can even upload your very own pictures that you've taken. Say you have a farm above coming and you have taken all these great pictures of the lake and land and everything. You can segment that as a segmented video for the listing. I've seen agents do it. It looks incredible. I have an agent that I know who's done a high rise where it, they literally did a segmented virtual tour of just the um, views from the high rise condo. And it looks incredible. It's a nice little feature to use. Just a recommendation. I can always teach you how, but I want to teach you why, of course. <laughs> All right, so we've covered the video for the most part. If you have any questions, give me a call. This video will be posted on our H&R Trainer account, of course. Another cool thing with the video is that we do have a blog. Now, I know one or two people who are in this class right now who are already starting to use video blogging. Take full advantage of what YouTube has. Now, I can't go too deep into blogging, but I do have videos on H&R Trainer for the blog. I would recommend checking it out. I do discuss how to put a video into a blog entry on the Harry Norman blog. It's just another great resource you have. If you have questions about video blogging, reach out to me. I don't want to go too deep because that is very, very advanced and it's pretty fun. Really, it is. But push them out. Once you do a blog entry, you can push it to all your socials and get the word out that you have a sturdy blog running, which of course is great SEO for your website. All right. So the one item that people use the most often at this moment is the social media card. The reason why is because it's so simple. Mia literally gives you the option to post directly to Facebook, Pinterest and Twitter straight from your account. So I'm gonna bring this up real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna use the for sale option. You'll notice when I go to the listings, for sale social media post, you have Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, which is awesome, right? If I have a brand new listing, the very first thing I would do is I would download the image and I would email it to myself. I would email it to myself and I would post it directly to Instagram. A lot of people ask me that all the time. Why doesn't this go straight to Instagram? Because Instagram doesn't work too well with um, other, other websites. It doesn't take feeds in. It usually feeds, it just feeds out. So the easiest way to solve this is download the JPEG, put it into an email and send it to yourself. That way you can save it to your phone and post it. Do I have any questions about this? I cover this, I have to answer this question a lot throughout my day. That'll cover your Instagram, an easy win, of course. No questions, okay. Don't forget, if you need to change the photo on your social post, there is the edit tool. If you want to make a second social post, you can duplicate this item and feature something in your listing. Take advantage of what it allows you to edit. It's great for that. Of course, Get it out on all social posts. You can pull this item, your just listed e-card, into your CRM for email marketing as an image. I will cover how to do that in just a second. So if you have a list in the CRM that's very sturdy, take full advantage of getting this out there. Once again, this is what we just covered. This is your Instagram posting. I emailed myself that image of the just listed. I put it into my photo reel on my phone and I created an Instagram post where I featured information, check out this incredible home and blah, 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 you know, all that kind of information. I added a location to where the listing is 
based on the photo. And then of course, you can post it out on your Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. Get the word out. It's an easy win. Even if you do this and then follow it up with another post, your traffic will of course increase on the listing. Do I have any questions about Instagram and how to use this feature? Okay. All right, so I actually have this up to the side right now. Let me open that up on Facebook. The reason why I have this up is because I feel sometimes agents, and they miss the easy wins when it comes to a Facebook post. You should have a very robust post. When you do your just listed e-card, whether you hand place it into your Facebook, whether you post it through Mia, come back and edit and add certain features that you need. A good description with hashtags. Um, also, I see how I incorporated the virtual tour link and the video from YouTube on this listing. Expand upon your post. Never just post a picture. Add more to it. It gets more traffic coming in when you give when you feed to it. Uh, so I just got a quick question. Is there a way to change the header rather than just listed to one market or other for a listing that has been on for a bit? We actually have a for sale option um, that works for you. There's also some of the items in um, Mia have a custom header. So just look for the options that have that. Here, let me go to designs real quick and I'll show you where that is. I believe, I'm trying to think of which ones have it. Uh, is it flyer that has a custom header? Yeah, so for this flyer design, it literally within, see the little description that says SSV custom header? That will allow you to change it to something like on the market or, you know, the, the good thing is they added for sale as an option for those listings that are still on market. No problem. Seriously, I love these questions. My last class, no one asked questions or had any feedback. I wanted, I want this. This is great. So of course, make make your post through Mia strong. Strong post gets more visibility, gets more views. Take full advantage of that moment. E flyers. Once again, Facebook, Pinterest. LinkedIn or, or Twitter, then of course you can push push to Instagram, LinkedIn, Mia um, can push to CRM. So think of all the different ways you're going to use this flyer. Now, one thing I do want to cover, which came in my last class, which is so cool because I'm, I'm glad this person brought this up. And there's actually somebody in this class right now who will take full advantage of this. I'm going to, let me get out of this real quick. I have become very fond of Pinterest recently because of its abilities with blogging and websites. One thing that an agent from another office brought up is that they wanted to create a board, a Pinterest board for their listings. And the reason why is it's coverage for them. So when you go to this pin that comes from Mia, you'll see, and you can add a description, you can put in comments, it's more exposure for the listing on this platform. It doesn't require a ton of effort. All I did was I created a, a board, which I will be teaching a class on this coming up, named Trainer, and I had Mia push this item to Pinterest. Let me bring it up real quick, the flyer. So all you have to do is click pin to print Pinterest, and it pushes it to a board on your Pinterest account. Once again, easy wins, easy exposure. Pinterest is starting to fluctuate a good bit, and being the primary user of Pinterest is an advantage to you as a real estate agent. Take advantage of easy wins. Creating a solid board for your listing is great. It also, the cool thing about this, let me see, it has a social post through Pinterest as an option, which is awesome to get the word out. So if you've never tried Pinterest, it's really hard to mess up on. Um, and it's a great account to play with. You get to find some really great resources from it. I use it personally because it has great tips on how to tie flies for fishing and you know home maintenance stuff. You can't beat it. So 
something to cover. I thought it was really cool that the agent created a board that has their listings for sale as a resource, so something to consider. Plus, it gives more people the chance to see the flyer on your listing as, as well. E-postcard, not exactly my favorite item, just because of it's limited on what how it can be pushed out and that it only has one photo. But, you know, you can customize it. You can make it more focused on, for instance, uh, an event. If you have a wine and cheese event, you can make an edit on this to make it about the event. It's something I would recommend. Um, toy with it, edit the text, use it to your advantage. Another thing that a lot of people do is they'll create a design in the e-postcard and they will self-send it to themselves and push it out to their contacts. That's one way of handling something a little quicker to get done. All right, so of course, did you know our CRM can work with Mia? I will go over this in just a second. For those of you who are interested, I will go from start to finish. We've already kind of covered how the contacts options works. There is a limit on how many it can send to per month. It's 1,500. The CRM, of course, there is no limitations. You can send as many items as you'd like. So take advantage of the CRM. I teach a class on the CRM. There's also videos for it as well. Uh, lastly, of course, there are postcards, printed collateral. You know, you can, with Mia, you can download a PDF and you can send it to your marketing staff so they can print it on better paper if you're in a hurry or in a rush, or you can send it to Staples and have them print it. Um, also, there's printing options with companies we already know, like Express Docs. So if you have, if your staff has something set up with Express Docs in a, um, a cheaper manner, just download the PDF, send it to your marketing staff, and they can set up that postcard um, arrangement, just so you know. And that, that's straight from marketing coordinators telling me this. All right. So I know I've covered a lot of things. Um, I hope I'm entertaining y'all. <laughs> uh, so, so wait a minute. So I just shared to Pinterest and the images and shared on Pinterest. Sorry, on phone. Okay, I might check back with you afterwards. Image broken, won't show. Try, try uh, if your image breaks, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll check back. But if your image breaks on Pinterest, go into your Pinterest account, check and see if it's truly broken. If it is, just remove the Pinterest post and reapply it and see if it takes. There might be too many things going on in your computer because I've done, I did two of them just a little while ago on my test account. I didn't have any problems doing it. But I hope this class is entertaining. Do I have any questions? Because I'm going to go into the CRM in just a second to show you all how to use the collateral. Okay, so we're done with this part, which is cool. Try using a new social media. See if it's something that you enjoy. Have fun with it. You can't break it. Seriously, Pinterest is fun. Facebook, do it correctly. Make sure you have a robust, a robust post. YouTube, take advantage of these free videos that are able to be posted and you can share. It makes your contacts, blows their minds when they see that you're doing a video for their listing. Also, there are, let me go back to this, the website option. That URL for that website looks really impressive on social media. Use the link for this website in your posting. It, to be honest, when people see that you have a website, virtual tour, video, all these items for your listing, it looks like you've gone further than anybody in the industry. You know, It's really impressive, so take advantage of these items. All right, so I'm gonna go into for sale. And this social media post, I'm going to download this image because my goal is I'm going to take this into my CRM. So I'm going to click download image. I don't know why it's going a little slow. Come on. 
I think I have way too many things open, <laughs> which is probably my my biggest problem. <laughs> Come on. Well, I know I have one on my desktop, so I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead so I'm not wasting your time. Oh, there it is. Just showed up down here at the bottom. Let me go ahead and save this image to my desktop. Okay. If you if you're if you run into the same situation as I do with the Windows computer, when you download these JPEGs, there's this little checkbox right, or this arrow right here. When you click on it, go to show in folder. Oops. Which will open up your downloads folder and you can just drag it to your desktop so you can use easily use it. Just that's just a recommendation from my end. So now I have a JPEG sitting on my desktop right now. God, I wish I had a bigger window here. Right here, I have the JPEG. It looks just like this. My goal is I want to make a template for myself to send through the CRM. So to do this, I'm going to go to marketing. I'm going to go to email content. Okay. From here, I'm going to grab a generic template. So I'm going to go to category and I'm just going to grab my uh, holiday e-cards because those are pretty generic. I'm going to use, yeah, I'm just going to grab this holiday card. Okay. And I'm going to use this as my template for my Mia um, e-card to send out to my clients. So I'm going to hit the clone option, which I have a video for this on YouTube if you need more time to kind of slow down with this, but I'm going to clone it, okay, which brings up the design in the CRM, and I'm just going to name it, you know, say for sale. I mean, I, of course, y'all are going to be more creative than that, <laughs> of course. Uh, I'm going to name this for sale, okay. So here is the design in the CRM. Please do not overthink this. Please don't overthink this. I'm going to click on the happy holidays and I'm just going to delete it. Not scary, not scary at all. I just deleted the image because the goal is I want to go get the other picture and place it in. So I'm going to come up here to this option that says image. I'm, this window will populate and I'm going to browse server to go, go get that image. I'm gonna come over to the upload option and I am going to grab the 5332 Green Hill Place for sale social media card and I'm gonna say open. You'll notice the image is right here. I'm gonna click on it. One thing I would recommend Figure out the best size for you. I use 800 in this option to make sure that it fits my social media post or my um, e-card post. I'm going to center it and I'm going to say, okay. Just as easy as that. So now I have a CRM e-card that I've created for this for sale option for 5332 Green Hill. Now, if I want to take this a little further, and I have a video in YouTube, right? I'm going to take the URL from this YouTube video. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to put a link to it on this, social, this CRM card. So I'm going to hit the link and I'm going to control V it to paste it down into this or right click and paste it down. And I'm going to say, okay. So now, when someone receives this e-card from my CRM, they'll receive this image with my information at the bottom. You can always remove this if you'd like just by deleting it. And when they click on the image, it's going to go to that YouTube video that I just hyperlinked it to. All I did was I used this link option. And I'm going to click save email content. Now, I know the CRM like the back of my hand. If anybody runs into any questions or any problems using this, please call me. This has so many options because 
you can create uh, an e-flyer, the social media post. You have options that you can bring into the CRM and make multiple templates to send out. Just like what I did, I brought up a holiday card, one of the ones from corporate. I cloned it, which means I made a copy for myself. I deleted the picture and I placed the picture that I have on my desktop in its place at 800 pixels wide. If you want to add a hyperlink, do it. But if you want to reference, of course, I'm going to be posting this video tonight. So if you want to reference back to this, it's very easy to use. Do you have any questions about incorporating Mia into your CRM? I know that's a little bit more advanced. This is an advanced class. So I want to make sure y'all try some of these things. All right. Well, that's the end of my class. I've covered everything I can possibly think of. Mia has so many options. Please try them all. See what works for you. Get into a routine of how you're going to post and use them. And if you have any questions, I'm here. The video will be available on H&R Trainer on YouTube. And yeah, I'm here to help if you need me. I hope I entertained and I hope this was a good class for everyone.